Eleven people are about to make history, attempting a journey that's never been done before. I didn't come on this expedition to be pushed. With no expedition experience, they're going to journey an incredible 1,500 kilometers across Africa. And they're all disabled. Richie was born without arms. Kim has cerebral palsy. Paraplegics Heidi and Kate are in wheelchairs. I'm paralyzed from the waist down. I cannot have somebody sitting on my fucking lap. Sophie has a chondroplasia. Oh, my feet are feeling it a bit. Cholton, Tim, oh. and Georgie all lost limbs in horrific accidents. My sink is swollen. Give me some water. Pam and Mark are deaf. I don't hear anything without my hearing aid. And Pete has Tourette's. <laughs> I think I'm normal. I think everyone else is mad. There you go. They'll cross mosquito-infested swamplands, come face to face with wild animals, endure the scorching heat of the world's oldest desert, <laughs> and climb mountainous sand dunes. Not all of them will make it. I want to go home. I've had enough. Come on, we are a team. We will not be bloody beaten by this country. But every one of them accepts the challenge to push themselves beyond the boundaries of their disability and change the perception of others. The journey starts in Livingston, Zambia. Named after the famous explorer David Livingston, it's home to the Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the natural world. The team are all volunteers. None of them know each other. Their mission is simply to do what defeated Livingston, cross Africa. Waiting for them on the tarmac is expedition leader Ken Haynes. His job is to advise and guide them on their perilous journey. Hey, how are you? Hey. Welcome. I'm facing perhaps one of the biggest challenges of my life to try and get them across this terrain. It's going to be a test to their spirit to see whether they, they can adapt, whether they can improvise, whether they can overcome their own personal fears, their tiredness, the fatigue, the heat, the cold, to get through it to the end. Yeah, lovely hi. to see you. Hi, hi darling. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, I'm all right. Yes, yeah. thank you. you. Ahead of them lies a route that encompasses four ecosystems. The swamps of the Zambezi River to the wetlands of the Caprivi Strip in Namibia. Then they'll cross the baking Nabib Desert before reaching the sand dunes of the Skeleton Coast. If all this wasn't enough, Ken's new arrivals have just a day to acclimatize and get to know each other. It isn't going to be easy to create a team out of a group of such strong-willed individuals, each with very different life experiences. Ta-da! Well, I've got obviously no arms, <laughs> but I've got a finger here and a finger here. This one's broken, so it just flops about. Um, I, I've got quite a nice chest, <laughs> as you can see. But there's no reason for it, it's just luck. Um, no one knows what it is. Richie was born with a mysterious syndrome that defies medical explanation. In the womb, his hands and arms simply didn't form. But he's never considered this condition to be a disadvantage. Looks worse than it is, really. <laughs> 19-year-old Sophie was born with a chondroplasia, commonly known as dwarfism. You get people coming up to you saying, why are you short? Why are you like that? Why are you short? And sometimes it can be like, because God made me like this. Or sometimes you just discuss it with them and say, I'm short because, because I've got a disability. I think it's a lot easier to just carry on and just to pass by and ignore it. 
but to confront it is the hardest thing. Eight years ago, ex-soldier and extreme sports fan Tim lost his left arm in a motorbike accident. I was a rock climber, windsurfer. I'd done ski diving in the Air Force. I was playing five-a-side football the day before the accident. I used to race motorcycles, repair bikes, repair anything with an engine, and that was all gone. It was just completely gone. But Tim won't let his disability stop him doing the things he loves. Anybody that, that tries to disparage what we're doing and sort of point out, oh, but you're all disabled, you know, this, that, and the other. Who's disabled? You know, we're doing something that most able-bodied people would flinch at. But before the group set off on their epic journey, Ken has organised a surprise. For you, the challenge really begins here. Behind you, the river descends into a gorge. To bond as a team, I challenge you to run the Zambezi River Gorge in rafts. The Zambezi River is classed as a level five, which makes it one of the most dangerous rivers. It's going to be an extreme bonding exercise. Ken is only too aware that disability forces self-reliance. Doing things for yourself becomes a necessity. To survive the Zambezi, they'll have to work as a team. If they don't, they'll be thrown into the swirling rapids. It's not an easy descent, especially for Kate with partial paralysis to her left side, and Kim, who with cerebral palsy can't fully coordinate her body movements. It's difficult for her to walk very long unaided. We've got 70 foot of really hard going rocks. We're going to have to transfer them to the board, I think. As the trail down becomes more difficult, it's not possible to carry Heidi's chair any further. Unlike Kate, she's completely paralyzed below her waist and must be stretched down. Three years ago, Heidi was a working tree surgeon. Her life changed forever when a tree she was cutting fell on top of her. The minute it hit me, I knew I was paralyzed. The millisecond it hit me. So the tree kind of pummeled me face first in the mud. I thought both of my legs were actually broken, but it was only one. Apparently the bone was sticking through the skin. I was screaming to get the effing tree off me, and I was screaming at the top of my voice. I've never screamed like that before. The hardest, darkest moments were actually the first three weeks, because that's when you lie on your back, can't move, can't do anything, and that's when reality hit in that I wasn't going to walk again. Keeping a close watch is the expedition doctor, Mukul Akawal. He'll be their shadow for the whole journey, attending to injuries day and night. But right now, he's worried, seriously worried. Below the level of an injury for a spinal cord, you get osteoporosis, so your bones become much more fragile. So Heidi or Kate banged up against some rocks could easily uh, break bones. It's water, it's unpredictable, it's rapids. It's the unpredictability that always makes me nervous. Some of the rapids can pull you under if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. We could drown somebody here. Somebody could easily get drowned. Probably the best river I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like that before. That is just awesome. That's out of this world. At the bottom, it's a boiling mass of water, separating the team from their kayaks. To get to them, they'll each have to jump into the raging torrent. It's the first great test for Richie. I've never jumped into water, not even a swimming pool. So I'm shitting myself, <laughs> big time. We'll get there, I'll do it. For you, the challenge really begins here. Do you accept the challenge? Yes! Well done, good luck. Leg amputee Cholton is the first to jump. The waiting kayaks must catch him before he's swept downriver. There's no margin for error. Sophie follows. Then Georgie, minus her left leg. And Heidi, carefully lowered. Finally, it's Richie's turn.
the team have been divided into two rafts. One for the more seriously physically disabled, including Heidi, Kate and Richie, and one for the rest. But it's an academic division. Ahead in the dark canyon are the rapids. The most notorious is rapid number four. Richie's raft is first to try the run. Come on! They've been lucky. They're through the worst part, but only just. Tim and Sophie's raft is next. They'll need to take exactly the same route to avoid disaster. gone over. Everyone's hanging on, but there's somebody missing. Sophie, the youngest and smallest. She's being inexorably swept into the teeth of the next rapid. It's all over here. You can vent. Most of the time, you're in it. It's just liquid. It's as simple as that. Bring on the next 19. <laughs> <laughs> There's another seven miles of canyon and 19 rapids to go, testing the team's strength to the limit. But this time, guts, determination, and good luck gets them through. After a 10-hour baptism of terror and exhilaration, they finish with a 700-foot climb to the top of the gorge. And I just lay here like Lady Muck. <laughs> Their extreme experience has left them all shattered and shaken to the core. We had a few hairy moments that we weren't expecting there, and I don't think it's helped my fear of water at all. I think it's made it worse. <laughs> I'm not really into uh, post-death experiences. <laughs> it's all good. I'm alive. It's all right. My father's prayers are working. <laughs> I am knackered. Swimming was good. The walk, I'm not so sure about. Just give me some water. Give me a fucking cigarette. <laughs> yeah, they, they've bonded as a, as a family now. Not as a team. That's different. But they're, they're beginning to like each other. Some are beginning to dislike each other. And they've got to sort out their relationships before they can move on and finish this trip. Okay. Yes, thank you. The rapids have claimed the team's first casualty. An oar has smashed one of Tim's teeth out. Oh, is it sore? No. 
No. And this is all artificial, it's not, not your own tooth? No. Okay. So if we've got some kind of glue... OK. Just to hold it in while I'm smiling for pictures, yeah. you might have it. No, it gives you tough good luck. <laughs> oh, really? I don't think so. I look yeah. like Billy Joe Jimbo. <laughs>